Welcome to Making a Mystic, your favorite podcast for all things spiritual, esoteric, mystical, and magical, where we take a deep dive into understanding misunderstood concepts and using these principles to manifest a more fulfilling life for ourselves. First off, I just want to give a big thank you to all of our new subscribers and listeners who tuned in last week for our first episode. I hope to see you back here when this episode is released. Hopefully this is going to be a a juicier topic, a little more information to, to relay to you guys. This week on Making a Mystic, I'm hoping to go over the fundamentals and basics of mysticism, meditation, and try and answer the question of what is mysticism. So to me, mysticism is such a blanket term. Um, There's so many things that are entailed in the realm of mysticism. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe they all have their place and time in use in your magical practice. We will get to that later, but... Right now, I'm just kind of looking at the bare definition of mysticism. Mysticism is discovering one's ultimate self-reality, the relationship of man, women, mind, and universe. Discovering that there is a supreme universal intelligence, God, divine energy or light that resides in the deeper parts of our mind, and making direct contact with the divine energy, universal mind, or God. Experiencing this presence knowing that the divine energy or light exists and can be contacted. So if you notice, I refer to God or divine energy by multiple different terms. This is because the practice of mysticism is not secluded to one religion or belief. How I understand it, to the best of my knowledge, is mysticism is basically taking the things that we are told to believe or we feel that we believe and truly bringing an understanding of why we believe them and how they work, aside from just being stories or prayers or however you might want to look at it. So when we start looking into mysticism, we get faced with the most important practice in all of magic and mysticism, meditation. Why do we meditate? Meditating allows us to kind of close our eyes and escape from our daily thoughts stresses and things that happen throughout the day so essentially you're not doing this to think you're doing this to release your everyday thoughts this allows us to ground ourselves in the now which allows the deeper parts of our mind the chance to surface and become apparent so kind of cutting out those things of the everyday stress it allows you to kind of go into your mind and bring up the more important things that maybe you haven't been dwelling on all day or maybe haven't been at the forefront of your mind for weeks months even these these could be memories and things that you have to work out from years and years ago that you are bringing to the surface because your mind is telling you that that's what's currently affecting you or might be hindering your daily life and you need to work on that so the practice of mystical meditation is done with your physical eyes closed as you practice you'll discover what some people call second sight Um, Your mind may begin to see into itself. This could come as many different things. Um, I personally have a tough time interpreting what I'm seeing through my meditations. Um, But I will almost see see negative images of something. Um, It's never very clear. But the more I practice, the more I meditate, it, it kind of becomes more apparent to me. In mysticism, this is referred to as the third eye or the eye of the soul. Christ also referred to this when he said, If thine eye be single, thy body shall be filled with light. So with mystical meditation, what we're doing is we're kind of trying to tap in and channel that third eye or second sight ability that we have. Um, By doing this, we basically allow our bodies to be non-existent in the physical realm. As much as we are, we're, we're sitting however you might be meditating in your your area. You're almost making yourself non-existent to the physical realm and surrendering your body to your unconscious mind. You may, like I said, you may see images. You may feel things. You may get the tingles. It Again, it happens different for everybody. Now, a lot of people ask, why is meditation so important? Meditation allows us to take the things we've, we've learned in our studies, our visualizations, our different practices, and put them to 
practical use in our life. This is the difference between a practicing mystic or a magician, ceremonial magician versus an armchair magician. An armchair magician basically being somebody who has just taken in all of this information and claimed to know and be enlightened and have all of these skills but can't practically demonstrate them in their daily, day-to-day life. Comes back to one of my favorite quotes, for all I know, I know nothing if I do not demonstrate a better life. Because it's true, really. If you are sick and you go to the hospital, do you want a doctor who has read every book but not practice on a single patient? Or do you want the doctor treating you who has had the field experience, who has done the hands-on work, and you know you're safe in their hands? Let's get into how to practically use meditation in our daily life. Meditation is a very important practice to me. My favorite meditation I've been stuck on for upwards of six plus months now has been from the Norse witch, Benta, and it is her guided alpha state meditation, which I will include in the link below, which is really fantastic. Benta goes through and she counts you down and allows you to ground yourself in your current meditative state and position. After she's counted you down, she gives you a nice five-minute reflection time, I like to think of it, where I don't move. I do my best to not move a single muscle, and I like to do a little bit of fourfold breathing. So if, if you're not familiar with fourfold breathing, when you are in meditation, you will take four-second breath, inhale, hold for four seconds, Exhale for four. And hold for another four. And repeat. I like to do this for the full five minutes until you hear Ben to come back in to count you out of your alpha state meditation. During those five minutes is the most important for me. When I am focusing on my fourfold breath, it allows me to eliminate everything else from my mind and just focus on my counting and my breathing. I've had multiple things come through while I was doing this. Last night, for example, I was seeing some, I don't want to say visions, but some pictures or some images that I still, I've yet to interpret. I'm not sure what they mean. But when you start to understand that everything in your mind happens for a reason, you start to appreciate the little things or the little thoughts that come to the surface out of the blue, you might think. This allows you to kind of process what's really weighing on your mind or what's important to you and maybe unconsciously give you the answer that you're looking for. Another huge practice very important to me in meditation is called affirmative meditation or manifestation or visualization. Basically using your imagination but not just not just saying you want something. Manifestation is so much more than just speaking something into existence. This goes back to a study I read about years and years ago about an Olympic runner. They hooked him up to a treadmill. All his muscle, brain waves, neurons, they wanted to see what was firing when he was running. So they had him run, sprint at top speed on a treadmill so they could measure these analytics. After that, they had him go into somewhat of a meditation Kept him hooked up to all the same devices. But this time, when they had him close his eyes, they explained, we want you to imagine running. Imagine every process of your sprint from bending down to hearing the countdown to hearing the gun go off to running as fast as you possibly can, feeling every single muscle in your leg, your feet, your arms, your breathing, the same. Now keep in mind, he was not moving. There was no movement for this second experiment. When they compared the two brain scans of the physical running and the mental running, the brain waves and the neurons were all firing the exact same way. The mind did not know a difference between the physical and the mental. That alone just shows you how powerful your mind in itself can be. 
So when you manifest something, this is how I, I go over manifestation and how I deal with it. Like I said, you're not just telling yourself you want something. You have to feel it. It's more than just saying it. It's feeling it. Every single aspect, allowing your body to know the feeling of satisfaction. Say when you've obtained this goal, you want to go through all of the processes of how you're going to attain the goal you're looking for, the feelings you would have once you have achieved this, the excitement, the anxiousness, the gratification. You want your mind to release those chemicals into your brain so that you almost crave the feeling of achieving that. Once you've manifested that into your mind, you will subconsciously strive for nothing less than exactly what you've set out for. Let me try to give a little bit better of an example of manifestation, something that you guys can relate to a little easier. Imagine you, there's a job that you want. You want this job and you will settle for nothing less. In order to manifest that, aside from, you know, being diligent, handing in resumes, keeping up on the calls with the managers, whatever it be, to manifest something, if we're using a job as example, you would want to go into meditation, go into the parts of your mind, and envision yourself going through the processes and going through the steps of how you would potentially get that job, such as the feelings you would have filling out your resume, speaking to the manager, handing in your resume, the excitement and nerves that you might have waiting for that call back, the satisfaction you would receive when you finally get that call saying, hey, come on in for an interview. So at that point, you've already made it halfway. So from there, you want to imagine or visualize, however you want to look at it, actually being told you got the job, giving your body and going through the feelings that you would really feel if you did get this job. You want to program your brain, kind of, it's kind of like auto-programming. You want to program your brain to know what it feels like to have that position, to have that job and to get that call in order for your brain to know what it's like to achieve that. So then in turn, you're actually manifesting what you want into your own life. It's not something that's going to happen right away. You don't just do this one time and everything magically works. It is a process. It is trial and error. Some things work, some things don't work. This allows us to plant a seed in our subconscious mind that will grow and begin kind of pushing us unconsciously towards what we're striving for to achieve that outcome and bring that energy and thought form into a very real physical outcome in our lives. And it is our job as practitioners of our specific mystical or magical practice to figure out what is best for us and what works. I like to leave a journal every night after my rituals, my meditation, my visualizations, everything I do. I write down what I experienced, what I felt. Maybe, maybe I switched up something in my rituals that night. Um, I always like to note what I have felt and changed because that is, that's the biggest thing is that's your subconscious mind telling you this works or this didn't work. Um, I will get more into depth in other episodes on rituals, daily practices, and that kind of thing. Again, this is basically just a very bare brush of what is mysticism, which has roughly been concluded to finding oneness with yourself in the divine or basically any wisdom or knowledge that's gained towards a spiritual understanding. Now, if we go back into my comment before of there are many practices of mysticism, things like divination, tea leaf reading, palm reading, crystal gazing, whatever you decide that you like or how you connect with your practice. Now, these things on their own are not mysticism in itself. A deck of tarot cards without knowing what they mean or what they represent is just a deck of cards. Until you put an understanding or a meaning to them, they're just cards. Same as crystals. So I'm going to use amethyst as an example. 
the crystal amethyst is good for turning negative energy into positive energy. Um, helps you with sleep and remembering your dreams. So how I understand that is without the practices we've been discussing through this podcast, those crystals are just precious stones. They're just rocks of sort that have a potential use or a potential energy associated with it. In order to have this crystal work the way you would like it to, you need to understand what this crystal does and embody it with that energy. You can't just pick up a crystal and say, oh, I've got amethyst now, I'm going to be able to sleep. That's not how it works. If you don't believe that they're going to help you or they're going to work, they will not. But you have to put that energy form into that crystal. So what I like to do is in my meditations, this is what I differ from visualization to manifestation. To me, this is visualization. So what I do when I have a crystal and I would like to charge a crystal or a talisman or whatever you are using, I hold it in my hand and when I inhale, I imagine a bright white light coming into me, filling my body. And then as I exhale, I put an intent to my thought on what I want this crystal or this talisman to be charged with. So again, if we're using amethyst and we want to, we want help with understanding our dreams better, maybe interpreting what our dreams mean to us a little bit better. This comes into our manifestation discussion is where you have to imagine that energy that you've just taken in. As you exhale, you want to imagine that energy going into that crystal or that talisman or that sigil. With that thought form of, I want to remember my dreams. Or whatever your specific want is for that time over time, you're charging this crystal with that energy, allowing it to embody what it is able to do. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't me saying crystals don't work. I don't like crystals because I do. I have a large collection of crystals. I do find they work. Um, It's just about understanding how they work and how to get them to work, how to tap into that energy that we all have within us and embody it into a specific item. Again, this allows us to plant a seed in our brain that every time we see this sigil or talisman or crystal, that our mind is subconsciously reminding us to be conscious of what we're striving for, what we've just embodied this crystal or talisman for, our intent. Now, this all might seem like a lot at once. I am going to be going into each of these topics separately in other episodes because there is so much involved in each of these practices. This is really just a touch on, just a drop on what mysticism can be or how we can use it. So that just about wraps us up for this week. I just want to thank everybody for listening to us another week. I can't wait till our next episode. If you like the podcast, check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, and YouTube. If you want a deeper look into my personal practice and my daily life, you can check out the Making a Mystic Patreon account. All of our links will be in the description on our YouTube channel, as well as I am going to link the North Switch Guided Alpha State Meditation, because in the end, it really is my favorite meditation. I would appreciate it if you guys could head on over to the North Switch page on YouTube, give her a subscribe, ring that bell, take a look at her guided meditation, and maybe take a look at some of her other stuff. I fell in love with her page when I first started kind of researching and understanding spirituality as a whole which really helped me kind of be comfortable in who I am and what I believe and kind of accepting and practicing my beliefs openly because there's for no reason should we ever feel bad for what we believe or have to be hidden away from society because it's not what they agree or how they think we should practice things in spiritual and honor our gods. And hopefully it does the same for you. So... Going over this week's podcast a little bit, I would like to know if you guys want to leave in the comments, what is mysticism to you? How do you guys practice? And what would you like to see or hear in our next podcast? 
Um, I'd love to hear from you guys so I can start structuring some episodes more on what you want to hear. I mean, I do have a whole arsenal of topics and information to give, relay, help explain to the best of my knowledge. And hopefully along the way as I teach, I can learn something from you guys. Um, ideally, every situation I always like to come out learning. I don't want to claim that I know everything or that I am the smartest or I know the way because that's not the case. This is simply just how I understand things and how they've become apparent to me and manifest in my own life. So I would like to kind of share that information that maybe my understanding will help you kind of understand as well and vice versa. I would love to learn something from you guys. So please take a look at the Making a Mystic podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Anchor. Also take a look at our Patreon if you want a deeper look inside. Again, I love you all. Thank you for being with us here again this week. Until next time. Mm -hmm.